Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Nicole. So in today's video, we're gonna be refinishing a mirror that I found on Facebook Marketplace. You can kind of see a sneak peek behind me. And we will also be decorating the table that we made in last week's video for the fall time. So if you wanna see everything that we get into, go ahead and keep watching. All right, y'all, so here is the mirror before I do anything to it at all. I got this mirror off of Facebook Marketplace for y'all. $20. Can you believe that? $20 for this mirror. I absolutely love it. It does look like a vintage mirror. I'm not sure if it's actually vintage. It for sure is not made by hand. I think it's like a mass manufactured one because I just kind of looked at the colors of it and stuff and the edges does not seem like it was made by hand, but that's okay. I really like it anyways. I feel like this style based off of the research that I did is called colonial style. Anyways, y'all, absolutely love the mirror but don't like the finish on it i want to try to strip it and see what comes of that so we're going to get into that process here in a bit So the first thing I started off by doing was putting a piece of plastic over the mirror and taping it down that way I could protect the mirror, but kind of ignore this part because this was all trial and error for me all and it didn't end up working. What I'm gonna use to actually strip this mirror's finish ended up kind of seeping under the tape and under the plastic and it got all over the place and it really made more of a mess than it had to. I just wanted to make sure the mirror wasn't gonna get messed up and it didn't so that was okay here is what i'm using to strip the finish it is easy off oven cleaner i don't know if y'all have ever heard of using oven cleaner to strip finish off of furniture i recently heard about this and i definitely want to give it a try so i thought why not try it on this because to sand a mirror that is this intricate would not be fun so definitely i wanted to give this a try here you can see y'all it is already bubbling immediately after you put the easy off on it starts to bubble just like it looks right here it's super cool kind of gross looking but also really cool As you can see right here I started to remove the oven cleaner first I started with a bucket of water and just a sponge because when I have seen people use the oven cleaner before they usually get like their power washer out and power wash the piece of furniture after they put the oven cleaner on to get the oven cleaner off but I didn't want to power wash the mirror because the back has plywood on it and you know plywood swells when it gets wet so I did not want to do that and I didn't know what type of wood this was made out of so I didn't want it to mess up in any kind of a way so that's the first thing that I tried and that didn't really work too well it wasn't really coming off then I decided to use a rag so this rag right here actually has lacquer thinner on it my husband had a lacquer thinner in the garage and he said why not try it I'm like okay let me try it I put a little bit of lacquer thinner on a rag and I just started kind of scrubbing like you're seeing right here and that was working but it wasn't working as well as I wanted it to so then I moved on to this glass bowl that I have right here with lacquer thinner in it and then I used a paintbrush and put a good amount of lacquer thinner on the mirror and then scrubbed it off with first a rag and then I switched to the sponge. So the sponge ended up working the best, taking off most of the finish. It looks like I'm doing a lot of scrubbing here, but y'all, it really wasn't that much work. It wasn't that difficult to do at all. I'm really happy with this method, honestly. But the only thing I can suggest is if you're gonna use lacquer thinner to remove the oven cleaner, then use steel wool or use a different type of sponge or maybe just a rag because my sponge did end up disintegrating in the lacquer thinner. I didn't have any steel wool and it was already getting dark this night. So I thought I'm just going to keep going. And if I need another sponge, I'll just go and grab another sponge. Oh, well, I'm just going to do it this way. But the following day, as you'll see in a little bit, I wanted it to get a little bit lighter and I did use steel wool and I did like the way that it ended up with steel wool better. I feel like it would have been a quicker result if I just use steel wool the whole time. And I can also say if you're gonna use oven cleaner, I only let this sit on the mirror for about 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, it was already starting to dry. It was hot outside this day, so maybe that's why, but I wouldn't leave it any longer than the amount that it takes for it to dry because once it's dry, it's very hard to remove. That does require way more scrubbing. So I would only recommend letting it sit for maybe five minutes and then checking on it 
and power washing it off or scrubbing it off and then doing it again if you feel like you need to do it again. So y'all now here it is the following day. The oven cleaner definitely took all of the finish off. I'm figuring that this is some kind of red wood and that's why it's staying a darker color, but I really like how it ended up turning out, especially the top. Look at how beautiful it looks. And it has kind of different finishes. Some areas stayed a little bit darker, some stayed a little bit lighter. And I actually really like that. So on this day, it's the following day. I am just gonna add one more layer of oven cleaner just out of curiosity to see if it lightens it up anymore. But honestly, it didn't really do anything to it. So if you remove all of the oven cleaner on the first try, I don't know, you can try it to see if it'll remove more, but personally, it didn't remove any more on this mirror. And like I said, that's okay because I still like how it ended up turning out. before I brought the mirror inside was I added some little hanging brackets to the back of it because I knew I wanted this mirror to be hanging on the wall and not just sitting on the table. It's too much of a liability sitting on the table since the dogs go in and out back there. I'm so nervous that they're gonna hit the table and hit it hard enough to like make the whole mirror fall. So I thought, no way, the mirror has to be hanging definitely. <laughs> So here is the after of a mirror, y'all. I absolutely love how it turned out. It still has a beautiful finish to it, but it is not as dark and pungent as it felt before. Now it's light and bright, and I absolutely love it in this space. So now our Facebook Marketplace Find Mirror is done. What do you all think about it? I absolutely love how it turned out. I really like that it still has that red wood look to it because if y'all know, my dining area table also has kind of like a red undertone to it. So now I feel like the red undertone is pulled throughout the house and y'all know how much I love pulling certain colors throughout the house. So our table is black, black is throughout my house as well. Now the red wood we have in the dining area and here at our back door area, I absolutely love it. I am so happy with how it turned out so I would say that using the oven cleaner to remove a finish is definitely a win and definitely try it out if you're wanting to remove a finish without sanding because really honestly who likes sanding anyways? Sanding is the worst, at least I think so. So y'all, now we can get to the decorating part of this video and officially our first fall decorating for this season. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, y'all, so now we're gonna get started with the decorating. So before we actually put everything together, I thought that I would share with you all all of the decor that I'm gonna be using on this table. At least it's what I think I'm gonna be using because I'm kind of going with the flow and we'll see what I end up coming up with but I think I have a good starting basis. So let me start out first with sharing with you all some candle holders that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. All right, so they're these candle holders right here. They are super beautiful. They are wrought iron, super, super pretty, super heavy as well. I got this one is 17.13 inches, super tall. And then I grabbed a smaller one and this one is 14.17 inches. So we have the taller one and the shorter one, but they still are both really tall and I think they're gonna look really nice on our table right here. So these, the smaller one was 21.99 and the taller one was $23.99, but they were 50% off and I picked up four of them. So I picked up two of the tall ones, they're right here, two of the tall ones and two of the short ones. So yeah, I'm excited to decorate with these and we will also be adding in some taper candles to our taper candle holders. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use these right here. These are battery operated. They also come with a remote and they're also on timers. I have found when it comes to battery operated candles, 
that I'm into when they have a timer on them, even more than when they have a remote, because when they have the timer, they turn on on their own, they stay on. I think they turn on for six hours and then they turn off for the rest of the time. And then they turn on again at the same time that you initially had turned them on the first time. And then they stay on for another six hours and they just keep turning on on their own. So they're super nice and easy to use. And then of course, when they run out of batteries, they won't turn on anymore. You just replace the batteries and that's that. I like this better than remotes because even when I have the remote, I end up losing the remote or I end up just forgetting to turn the candles on altogether. When they're timers, they turn themselves on, so that's pretty cool. So I think I'm gonna be using these if they're not too tall. If they end up too tall, then I'm just gonna end up using regular taper candles that I probably will never light because I don't know that it's safe back here where I'm not always at. So they will just be there for decor, but we will see once we get into the actual decorating. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be decorating with is gonna be this wreath right here. I just DIY'd this wreath. I will show you guys a little clip. Super, super easy to do. This is, this is just a small fern wreath that came from Hobby Lobby. It was 50% off, so super good deal. And then I just added some little pit berry picks to it. And then these larger kind of pomegranate looking picks that came from Joann's to it. Then I just tied a ribbon onto it so that I can hang it from our mirror that we have right here. So yes, super easy little DIY wreath that I'm going to be using to decorate on the mirror. So in the middle of my table, if y'all have seen when I decorate the entryway, I always like to use a dough bowl on the entryway. So I decided to steal the dough bowl from the entryway table and use it on this back entryway table over here. So this is the dough bowl that I'm talking about. It's a very large dough bowl. I absolutely love it. I bought it, I think it was last year at Tuesday morning and it was a super good deal. Don't have the price on it anymore, but it was a really good deal. Actually, I just went to Tuesday morning yesterday and they had one that was just as big as this for $16 on clearance. So if you're looking for a dough bowl, make sure to check out Tuesday morning. So yes, we'll be decorating with this right in the middle of the table. And then I was thinking to use the tall candle holders that I had shown y'all on either side to kind of bring in some height. Then you go down in the middle and then height on the other side as well. Then we'll put a lot of greenery and different fall picks in the dough bowl. And then on top of that, I will add a couple of fall pumpkins. Let me show you those right now. All right, so the pumpkins that I'm gonna be using inside of the dough bowl are these that I made last year, right here. So these are paper mache pumpkins that I made with a balloon. I will link that video down below if y'all are interested in seeing how I made them. They are super cute, super organic looking, kind of whimsy with the little pit berries that I added to them. So I have an orange one that I made, and then I have two really cute white ones that I made as well. So we will be using these three pumpkins inside of the dough bowl as well. So to go along with that wreath, I also have a couple of extra little picks that look like the little pomegranates, like the ones that were on that wreath. I might be using these in the dough bowl. Uh, we'll see once we get into making kind of an arrangement in the dough bowl if I end up using them or not, but we have some extras just in case. Up next, also to add to the dough bowl, I have these beautiful leaves right here. These are absolutely gorgeous. I saw them on another YouTuber's channel. She was sharing what she had picked up to decorate with for fall. She picked them up at Hobby Lobby. So I had to go out and get them because they're absolutely beautiful. I really love the colors of them. So these were each $2.99, super affordable. And I grabbed one, two, three, I grabbed five of these. So I'll probably be using these in the dough bowl as well. But like I said, we'll see once we get into decorating the dough bowl. All right, and last but not least for the dough bowl, I also picked up this large greenery sprig right here. This also came from Hobby Lobby. This one was not in the fall section. It was just in the regular floral section. It was $19.99, but the floral section was 50% off this week. That is the only time that I will shop florals at Hobby Lobby is when they're 50% off. So yes, I picked this long one up. Uh, my plan is kind of to separate it like that in the middle and to put it in the dough bowl and then kind of layer everything else on top of it. This year for fall, I kind of want to add in some greens. I've never really done greens when I've done fall in the past. I've just done the traditional oranges, creams, colors like that before. But this year I want to pull in the green as well. So we're going to have greens, we're going to have oranges, reds, burnt oranges, all of the beautiful colors, but mixed in with the green to kind of give it a more upscale look, to kind of give it some more interest. Now y'all, it is time to get into the decorating. So let's get into it.
So the last thing that I wanted to share with you all that I used to decorate was this basket right here. This basket came from Hobby Lobby. It was in their spring section and y'all I heard their spring section is 90% off starting today which is Monday but I will let y'all know that I, I stained all the wood pieces on this to be a little bit darker because they were really light wood and that doesn't really go with my style so yes I stained it. Then I just added the black and white piece that's at the bottom. That is actually a rug so I put that at the bottom and then I added a white blanket on the top. This came from Joann's and it was also in their spring section so it was on clearance at Joann's and then I added a couple of pumpkins that I already had. All right, y'all, so that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope that you all enjoyed watching me redo this mirror that I found on Facebook Marketplace and also decorating this back table for the fall time. It was so much fun to do. I'm glad that I got to bring you all along. If you liked it, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss any of the rest of our fall decorating videos. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye, y'all.